You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. It's VGC, the video game podcast with me, Jordan Midler, and Pete Donaldson. This week, Nintendo's got a spooky new game, and Microsoft are trying their best to ruin the Xbox Game Pass. But first, how are you doing, Pete? I'm good. I'm enjoying the um, acoustic, uh, I'm going to say issues, uh, of your lovely boxy hotel room. Where are you, Jordan? What are you doing? What's happening? I am in Santa Ana, California, which is a random little suburb suburb, Suburb. suburb of Los Angeles. Um, It's down near Disney, because I will be going to Disney. Uh, In Uh. fact, in about two hours' time, I am going to play... Star Wars Outlaws, which I can say I can't say anything more about that until like next week, but I'm going to play Star Wars Outlaws Um, and yeah, because uh, Disney is in this renaissance of making Star Wars games all of the publishers are like we can bring journalists to the park and go, Uh, oh look, sparkly park but for me, that just means uh, even more sleepless nights how are you, Pete? Where are you you on your travels? I've gone nowhere, I'm going nowhere (laughs) in my career my life um, that's not true I'm bashing through I'm bashing through yet another energy drink uh, a, uh, a classic talking. Monster Energy Zero Sugar um, in, in in full because I got called up the show quite late uh, in the day mm. uh, and I thought you know what I, I need I need that little bit of energy on a Thursday afternoon um, so we'll be hitting your ears you're like that morning. You're like that Euros player whose dad had to drive his boots from yes, Holland or whatever yeah, yeah. it was. It was it was on a boat. I guess um, he'll be driving them back, won't he? Because obviously they went out. Oh I mean, let's not forget, uh, John. You literally escaped um, one of England's finest victories, um, hiding on the west coast of America for a couple of days. I, I didn't escape it, mate. I was in Buffalo Wild Wings uh, <laughs> myself, and a representative from Ubisoft who remain remain nameless. Right. We got. Uh, unlimited wings mm. and fries for like three hours um, and a whole lot of alcohol oh, and watch okay. that game um, he is, he's English but he's got Hungarian parents so his allegiances are all over the place right. um, when that uh, Xavi Simmons goal went in I just gave a little fist pump I was like okay we're fine yeah, we're and then uh, Holland proceeded to play like absolute dog that <laughs> for sort of 70 minutes in, didn't they yeah <sighs> I just knew. I, ju- I, I just knew. I, see, having to see England go to two Euros finals in a, in a row, it's really... Um, I, it's really Scotland should stop qualifying because it, it's directly co- correlated. <laughs> I think it should. I think. I mean, it's it's very... Um, I, I believe the children call it edging. Um, I, I, I think um, we are edging through to the final. And I think um, you're, you are going to have a nice time. Um, I believe you're in London. Um, uh, mm-hmm. for, for the weekend, for, for Sunday's final, I'll be um, in Box Park. Yeah, I'll be buying be fourteen <laughs> quid pints and throwing them in the air for no reason. You'll be in the Box Park enjoying yourself. But uh, yeah, so you're going to get you're going to get everything um, London has to offer on on Sunday night. The best thing that VAR has done is it has certainly wasted millions of pounds worth of pints in yeah. Box Park. You have to imagine that like that, the off, uh, Foden's offside goal last night, mm. it was so close that you've got to imagine people went straight up yeah, you can, and then they had to go, oh uh, oh, sorry. You um, can't ring that out, you can't ring a £10 pint out of your breeches, can you really? It's uh, yeah, yeah. terrible stuff. Out of your 120 quid replica kit <laughs> or your 10 quid that you got off DH gate, which I fully endorse because they're basically the exact same item. Completely agree. But, Completely um, agree. I brought fo- I've, I've bought football boots from DH gate and, and I always thought that that might be a step too far. You know, the actual mm. product might be too complicated. Turns out they've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> they've been doing these ripoffs for 30 yeah. years. They're perfect. I'm, I, and, you know, Man and boy and boy and boy and boy exactly. and boy. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, Pete, since I'm in the US, I had to do it. I've got some energy drinks to review. Okay, okay. Um, I, teased, I teased online that I bought Spiked Monster, um, which is uh, monster and hard malt liquor. It's like a 6% thing. But considering it's 6 in the morning here, I will do a little addendum later in the day okay, to review that. Okay, let us know. Yeah. So How we'll start off with Rockstar Recovery. Um, let me put that to the proper camera. Strawberry Lemonade. Um, this actually sounds quite nice. I don't mind. I mean, I mean, it, it, I mean the, th- the fact that it says sort of recovery might suggest that it's um, it's got a bit of Lucozid in there, Diarolite. I mean, it's it's got to be... And the can doesn't seem that big compared to their usual absolute... Um, throbbers, throbbers. I believe. No, it's just a it's a seven it's a four hundred and seventy rather than a five hundred. It's quite nice. It's not caffeinated. It's just it's not caffeinated. And what is it then? It's smooth. What? It's like a morning like a, st- a morning drink with no caffeine. When do you drink mm-hmm, this? It's like a, a, I mean, it says recovery, so immediately I think hangover. Yeah. 
But you, um, but you need caffeine at that point, don't you? That's fascinating. Yeah. Revive and hydrate. Mm. Um, it's got a lot. It's got 160 milligrams of caffeine, so it's not bad. But it's not as. as oh, sorry. I might have said non-caffeinated there. I meant right. non-carbonated. Non-carbonated, fizzy, like a like a um, Malaysian uh, Red Bull. It's kind of like um, smooth. Yes. Yeah, I see. So you, I guess yeah, that that's a good shout actually because I mean you don't want the bubbly stuff when you've um, you, you know you've got a raging hangover and you feel a bit sick. Oh mate, this other one that I've got here that I'll do in the second half of the podcast has double the caffeine, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to this. Also, one thing that Americans do very well is these are absolutely these are so cold that when they've been introduced to the normal temperate air, mm. they've started to like piss condensation off of them because <laughs> they were so so cold. Hang on, um, this is six in the morning. Did you go down to like a a, um, a shop to buy these already? I pre-planned, brother. Yesterday I went to the AMPM, which is ah. a, a, a local chain of uh, garages. That it's honestly, it's it's like a it's like a Willy Wonka situation. They have floor to ceiling different brands and flavour. You know, you go into a shop in the UK and you'll maybe get one line yeah. at the top yeah, of yeah, the yeah. of the fridge. It's floor to ceiling here. Or a spe- you'll sometimes businesses. find a specific, specific sort of monster um, fridge. It's like black mm. that, that they've got free, and they've put all of the flavors in there. Um, do you ever flirt with all little twenty-four tiny little tincture bottles of uh, of energy that's supposed to give you twenty-four hours oh, of energy? The, yeah. So at Summer Game Fest, they had gamer edition ones of those. Ah. Um, that was very kindly gifted by um, George Foster from the Gamer, and we did a video where he drank one, and he's a small guy. He's mm. like he's he's very thin. Mm. Um, he's like a he's like a, a young man. Um, he drank one of them, and he looked like he was about to die. Um, I got I got two of them, and I was like basically fine. Yeah. Like I got two of them, then went back to my room and had a normal monster just to take the edge <laughs> off. So, um, yeah, just I, I don't know what off. the it's like drinking gravy these days yeah. for you, isn't it? It's like just it's that smooth. It doesn't really do anything to you. Makes you a little thirsty for more monster. Yeah. So yeah, I put it on my chips. Um, <laughs> the yeah, I think those things simulate energy by giving people that don't really drink energy drinks huge heart palpitations. Mm, so they think okay. they're getting it. Right. I don't think they're it's not, actually they're not really getting. No. There's not enough liquid to hold the amount of caffeine I, re- I require these days. Exactly. So, yeah. so you're just on the nitros then. I'm just on the. I'm, I'm just on the nitros. I, it's 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 what I can buy at uh, Sainsbury's, um, which, which you know it adds a good sort of two quid onto your um, how much you're usually spending in a week on Monster Energy drinks. If you buy them at Sainsbury's, and if you buy them not on like the high street versions of the Sainsbury's, not the um, the mega the mega marts, um, you, you you know you're spending a good couple more quid than you should be. Oh, it's, it's brutal, especially because next to where my partner lives, there is a a shop that I've um, evangelised about that does every flavour one pound regardless of what it is <laughs> clearly in an effort to because they still use Kill old people. pills like from the <laughs> 70s it's clearly an effort to like I don't want to add up anything everything is just going to be a flat yeah um, flat quid yeah, nice n- yeah so uh, that's great and then you, as you say you go into like the Tesco's at the train station in Glasgow and they want seven quid for four monsters well it's, like, it's, it's it, they kind of sell it in the same way that the DIY shop around the corner does if I go in looking for a bit of wood because um, I can't be asked to drive all the way out to uh, to, to B&Q um, he'll sort of take a bit of wood I'll, I'll give him a bit of wood and it won't have a price on it and it'll just be like an old bit of um, uh, like a, a stairway a bit stairwell basically a bit, a bit of stair and I'll go give it to him and he'll look at it and go four quid and I was like where's he pulled that from he's just making it up so he's just making life easier for himself he says four quid <laughs> <laughs> Oh, have you been doing any DIY recently? Have you got any jobs on currently? Are you too busy with real life? The uh, the old uh, the old um, I, I painted a I vandalised my neighbour's um, wall. Um, Good. Got a little outside area um, just on the like little patio bit, and um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to paint a big mural. <laughs> so I painted <laughs> a big sort of seaside scene uh, on the wall, and. Um, while my partner was uh, working at the Isle of Wight festival for uh, her radio station mm-hmm. and uh, and she come back and um, I, th- I think she was quietly impressed by my watercolour slash acrylic paint skills um, but the actual things that came out of her mouth uh, was that's not our wall Peter that's next door's wall um, and I didn't, re- I didn't realise that every wall to the west of the house is their wall and every wall to the east of the house is our wall so um, yeah mm-hmm. I just painted I just vandalised my, my, my neighbour's wall then I had to go around and uh, and, and basically fess up that I'd uh, painted their wall. So yeah, that's my that's my how DIY. Did it, how did it go down? Were the did, were the ends? It's fine. Is it now just whitewashed? I think. I think again. I think they were quietly impressed by it, but again, they didn't say it. 
<laughs> he just said, that's fine, Peter. Mm. Uh, I'm sure we can paint it over if we need to sell it or something. <laughs> You've got an artistic soul, and they can't know, really... Yeah. They, can't, they can't dampen that. I'm Banksy. Um, your message... <laughs> Your misses with the Isle of Wight festival mm. are so obviously you did the you did the early two thousands festivals. Um, is do you get the vibe that it's still like that, or is it all quinoa and like? Um, I think the Isle of Wight. I think the Isle, I think the Isle of Wight festival has the, um, the 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 burning violent heart of um, what I imagine V festival to be like. V festival Chelmsford, um, similar similar sort of. It, it can get a bit tasty <laughs> you know the the, the kind <laughs> of yeah we never say any of that because you know we used to work um you know backstage and stuff but um i could you know i, I feel like it's it's one of the tastier festivals i think it's still got the the beating heart of a um i'm trying to think of uh what was the what were the ones north of the border what were the big ones around you know, in the park t in the park the, was yeah t in the park was a big one but t in the park's a Transmet bit it's, it's, it's just, it's just reading in it yeah was transmit was, was, tra- was transmit the one that that bloke um buried a lot of book fast um months before the festival and they dug it up when i, th- when I think that in, is the right, case yeah. transmit yeah transmit's got a good um it's basically when you turn 16 you go to transmit right and take a lot of ecstasy um, yeah okay well that's yeah that's, that, that's that was after, that was always like reading and reading and leads i think but yeah there, there's no yeah. i don't think there are any kind of um i think they've all kind of homogenized to a certain extent but uh yeah and they're all a billion pounds now. Honestly, this this gig I'm going to on Sunday, if I could tell you the amount of money spent on it, <laughs> it's, it's one of the high the park ones, though, isn't it? It's one of the high. Par- I yeah, mean, I wouldn't mind ESD. it if you could actually bloody hear anything. The the sound quality yeah. in the Hyde Park for any of those kind of um, God, what was it? Mastercard? I can't remember who sponsors it now. Um, but yeah, the the amount of like volume you get because of the Hyde Park poshos complaining um, about about the volume being too high. Um, it's absolutely atrocious. It used to be good, and then they just turned down the volume immediately. Rubbish. I'm going to I'm going to say this now because my by the time anyone actually listens to this, the the scam is probably up. But right. I was two seconds away from emailing them and being like, "Can we get press passes? Because we cover uh, Japanese and Korean culture on VGC, mm. so it's really important that yeah. we're in the press pit for this." Um, but I'm I, just going to get. Mad with it, which will probably cost me about three months rent in Hyde Park. Who are they? Uh, who are they? Sort of, they must be looked after by like Sony or something. Because I mean, I did, I did look at the band you're going. Uh, can we say what the band is? A, a band, yeah, uh, Stray Kids. Stray Kids, which is really yeah. funny to see those kind of like idol magazines that you get in Japan um, with the title Stray Kids, Stray Kids, just Stray mm. Kids all over. Um, there, there is one um, of them who seems quite. I, I, I think he's supposed to be a pilot. But the the, the, the the hat that he's chosen looks a bit eagerly. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it's. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's the right way to go. <laughs> Look, there's a lot. There's a there's a there's grand tradition in that part of the world of them not taking that era too seriously. No. So, oh, I've um, seen a few, um, you know, <laughs> SS members on like in Halloween sort of garb. Um, at- I mean, atrocious, wonderfully atrocious. Didn't they? Didn't they call a? Wasn't there a New Japan Pro Wrestling pay per view in the mid two thousands that had like Nakamura and people on it that used like that was called like Final Solution or something <laughs> and used like SS imagery? It's, Everything's a oh, style. Just a bloody Every- for there. <laughs> Everything's yeah. a Everything can be pastiched. Everything can be borrowed. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair yeah. enough. Pete, do you want to win a PlayStation Five? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Yeah, I mean, I've got one. Unfortunately, barely play that. You are not eligible. Ah, nice. Um, but alas, you know who is eligible? Any listener to VGC, the video game podcast in the UK and the US, mm. thanks to our friends at Alaskan Road Truckers, which sounds like a TV show you used to do the eye dents for. <laughs> Coming up next, Alaskan Road Truckers. Um, <laughs> they are very kindly giving away a PlayStation Five to uh, the number one winner of this contest and a couple of codes for the game to the runners up. The way you win this will be to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, take a screenshot of that uh, with your username visible and send it to podcast at videogameschronicle.com for all the T's and C's and more kind of in-depth instructions as to how to do that. Go to VGC, it'll be at the top of the website for the next couple of Weeks, if you're listening to this in 2027, um, when did I die? And um, the contest is no longer going on. But thank you to Alaskan Road Truckers. Pete, you, you to, read to me as a man who loves 
one of these like Euro Truck Simulator, Alaskan Truck Simulator. If you didn't have a life to live, you would just build a rig and oh, then drive across Europe virtually. Oh, massive rig. Yeah, like a proper like you know fuzzy dice in front of the monitor. I'd have like a five monitor setup. I'd have a real comfy chair. I'd have a, like a professional big like oversized steering wheel as well with a knob mm-hmm. on the end as well. I love and and it's and it's such a lovely kind of like listen stick on a podcast or even stick on Limmy yeah. doing uh doing his streams <laughs> or doing the actual game itself um and just kind of bop around i'd find that sort of thing very very therapeutic and and you know for like i'm not saying alaskan road truckers is one of those games but some of these kind of trucking games from like eastern europe and stuff there's always a bug around the corner and there it's always oh, welcome yeah. it's all it, it's it's real like what am i finding uh off grid i'm finding bugs i'm finding trees flipping out i'm finding you know i'm just sinking through the the terrain uh, but I'm looking at Alaskan Road Truckers. So is this the kind of like is this their kind of big launch for their PS5 version of the game? Because presumably it came out on the PC earlier on. But it looks like um, yes, it looks like is, a right laugh. This is the this is the current gen version. Nice, okay. um, so uh, yeah, we're, we're we're giving away a PlayStation 5 for the current gen version of Alaskan Road Truckers. Mm. You know, I would love this to in the in future iterations of this game for it to really become like. A life simulator where you have to like get home, just to, like work on your ailing marriage because you're away for so mm. long. You've been like trucking for six days. Drop off some illegal immigrants for twelve hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, um, go to random little dive bars in the middle of Alaska and get into fights. Yeah, um, murder over women. Differences. They're always, they're always, <laughs> they're always murdering women, aren't they, truckers? <laughs> Especially those Alaskan. Let's see the Alaskan road <laughs> truckers. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, check out VGC for the full terms and conditions to win a PlayStation 5. Also, if you're worried that you're one of the VGC maniacs that has already um, left a review, that it is a, there's, a, there's a conciliation for that. Right. Don't worry, I've thought about you. Mm. So go to the website. Work. I don't need to hold your hand. I'm not your dad. Right. Pete Donaldson. Hi. Would you like some news? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just t- I'll just turn off the Alaska Road Truckers trailer that I'm, I'm watching. It's good, it's good stuff. <laughs> um, yes, I, I would. I would like some news, actually. Thank you. Let's start here. Nintendo releases creepy teaser trailer for a mystery M-rated Switch game. Um, you may you may have seen this uh, on YouTube. There is a there is a strange little trailer with the title M E O M E E M I O. And it's just a man wearing a bag, <laughs> standing around Pete Donaldson. That this seems like what you do in your recreational time. Again, again, a man who looks like he's killed a few women. Um, no, um, it, it's it's. I, I think um, it's. Uh, I think that explanation of the actual trailer itself. Um, smiling man in Japanese or Emio uh, mm. over here uh, in the West. I think that has taken longer than the actual trailer itself. And it's interesting <laughs> that it's kicked up so much interest. I don't know what it is about. Men in trench coats and leather gloves next to a wall uh, really excites people. But yeah, I think, I think it's because it's Nintendo. It's so yeah. weird to. It's like viewer discretion is advised, and then the big Switch logo comes in, and it's like, eh, happy times, Nintendo <laughs> Switch. And then it's here's here is a video that you would see on Live Leak. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, there's some sw- there's some swirling rumors about who's making this, but mm. I think the idea of a Nintendo backed horror game is. Delicious. It's quite exciting. It's not. It's, it's not what you expect when the past like decade of Nintendo has been. Here is us becoming. Here is the Disneyfication of Nintendo mm. into this like brand supergroup. There's so little kind of information. I mean, he seem, he's wearing a, a, a tie. Um, mm-hmm. That seems to be a real man's hand. I think it's a live action um, sort of video. So maybe it might be. Yeah, interesting. Well, Here's my question: How horrible will this be? Is this just going to be spooky, or is this going to be like manhunt? Are we going to, is, is, is this going to be some real, um, some real like six o'clock news uh, problems for Nintendo? Right, yeah, yeah. They've t- they've t- finally turned turned heel on the Barbara Cartland uh, generation. Was it Barbara Cartland? She was always <laughs> upset about. Was she, oh, was she Mary the one who Whitehouse? That's who Mary I was Whitehouse. Yeah, sorry, Barbara Carton wrote uh, grotty, grotty little sex uh, books, didn't she? The the tip of gore <laughs> situation in America. Yeah, I think it's like yeah, I I, I don't think they'll go. I, I mean, it might just be a, a, a teaser trailer for the next Luigi's Mansion. Let's make that very clear. That would but, be amazing. I would love really that. Dark. But uh, um, uh, whenever we do like a meeting about our podcast, the Football Ramble, uh, about um, like a sketch we could do for like a live show, mm-hmm. uh, Jim, uh, bless him, always wants to do something where we put a 
paper bag on our heads. So every time I see someone with a paper bag on their our heads, uh, their heads, I always think about Jim Campbell from the Ramble. We've never managed to get that sketch together. Um, I think Jim might just might be really into uh, men with um, paper bags on his head. So maybe this game will be right up his straws. Mm. Maybe I should maybe this is a, maybe this is viral marketing for Football Ramble Time Tunnel. Maybe uh, it is. Yeah, maybe it is. So, so I mean, this this kind of trailer was released, um, you know, this time yesterday. It's had a hundred thousand views. There's just not enough for people to get their teeth into, surely. I think that's why people are getting interested in it because it's mm. so un Nintendo. Mm. It's like usually <laughs> it was actually quite funny because the first time they put it up, the description had all the social media links and all that stuff, but then they deleted it and they're like, oh, oh, that, right, okay. that doesn't look cool. Let's just put a hashtag who is Emio. They've um, done, they've done like so, so, so the who is Emio, and if you type who is Emio into like YouTube, for example, so many. Um, just just random kind of um, Nintendo and non-Nintendo uh, sort of game mm-hmm. kind of people just putting out you know what is Emio who what is Nintendo teasing get an hour out of that get, get, yeah. a, cl- get a clean out of that Nintendo is scaring me he's got 30k views for that that's that's 10 quid <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky um, just on the Jim Campbell thing I've never um, I've never had the pleasure of meeting him in real life yet but mm. I'll have to um, tell him that Maybe ten years ago, we went to his show at the Edinburgh Fringe. Mm. It was like a, a group of like ten of us, and um, you know, Ed- Edinburgh Fringe shows it can be it can it can be feast or famine. Very very on what yeah. day you go, mm. in, t- in terms of what audience you get. So he's got like a, a decent little audience. We walk in like two minutes into the set and basically double the size of the audience <laughs> and it very clearly rocks him. <laughs> He's like, I, I was I, talking to one row of people and now there's a whole second and a half row of people. <laughs> to be fair, Jim, I have seen Jim do stand-up and he um, he did one gig, I think, with his microphone completely turned off um, and everyone was trying to quietly tell him that the microphone was turned off but because he was in his floor, he didn't quite get there. Um He's excellent at, at stand-up, uh, Jim. Yeah. I, I saw him again in a uh, in an abandoned kind of bar uh, at like twelve o'clock afternoon, and he he offers it on cold and flu medicine. He repeated about three minutes of his set twice because he was so <laughs> off his head. And it was it, and there was only a few people there, but I mean, good God, he's uh, he's a talented lad, is is Jim. He he, he didn't deserve yeah. that. He didn't deserve what the Benelin and the Benadryl did to him. <laughs> We've all been there, uh, um, but yeah, we, we'll see. As Emio Jim Campbell, we will find it out. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. Much more up your strata. Mm. Like a Dragon Studio says that the fans will be surprised by their next game. Um, this was at Anime Con, which I was banned from. Uh, Ryu Ga Gota. How do you pronounce the studio name? As a man who knows Japan better than what me, is it? Ryu, uh, it's Ryu Ga. What is it? Of Gotoku. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, um, shout out abroad in Japan. Um, I think yeah, with, they, I think with so, so I think with like, um, but I mean, yeah. So they've been going for quite a long time, haven't they? This this, this studio, mm. and um, I, I do sort of think when they say they're going to do something surprising, it'll still be kind of the same thing, but there'll be a new, you know, animal that's running a bowling alley or something. You know, it's always oh, on, it's always delicious and it's always want. brilliant. And it's all you want, but. I don't think people who love this series want a departure. They just want more stupid side quests, don't they? They got very lucky when they changed it from the the action games into like the kind of mm. um, turn based RPGs. Yeah. That was like a that shouldn't work, but it did. Right. Trying that again is like an absolute maniac. Sports uh, games, idea. new FIFA. <laughs> no, come on now. Um, <laughs> the the new winning eleven. Um, I, I wonder if it's just a case of they'll maybe try and detach it from the wider like a dragon slash yakuza lore because we're now like mm. 10 games in we're getting to the point where these characters that were introduced in the first game are starting to die of old age like they have to do something different yeah and um, they did judgment and lost judgment which was their kind of like police procedural kind of more serious side thing you still had a bit of like um like carry on on the buses like yeah. how's your father slapstick that is in all of those games but yeah i'm I'm keen. I'm keen to see uh, kind of what happens next because the transition has been great. I thought Infinite Wealth was absolutely brilliant. That's the kind of game that if you had nothing to do in your life, you would just play yeah. forever. You would have platinumed it. You're like a you're like an NPC in that game. But um, 
it's, it's also interesting that that series has been going for so long, but now it's really reached an apex of like popularity outside of Japan. Like the West has taken mm. it to its heart so severely that it feels like they're wanting to cash in. The Yakuza series is coming out on, I think that's an Amazon one, like later this year. So. Right. I think uh, we, I, I don't know. Uh, is it? Is I mean, the natural kind of conclusion has to be Toshihiro uh, Nagoshi just getting himself in that game, like the, the head of studio who went from <laughs> when he was working on Super Monkey Ball, normal looking boffin nerd, to weird sex person. Like within ten years, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'm obsessed with his kind of like trajectory. He's got to get himself in as as the lead in the game. It's got it's got to be there because like. Do the Hideo Kojima thing and just force yourself into just, absolutely everything. Exactly, you just be part of it, sort of thing. They could probably, but they they bash these games out so quickly. Like I don't know how they managed. I mean, Crunch cannot be a thing for them, or have they just got? Is it? I don't know. Do they have a procedural kind of like generator of content? I just don't know how they managed to sort of bash this stuff out. They must like just just on like recording lines alone or motion capture yeah. alone. It is a heavy, heavy game, and I don't know how they managed to kind of you know. Um, bash so much stuff out and get so much writing in there and and uh, yeah design it's, it's it's wild it's a weird situation where like there's a few Japanese studios that do that that have like such a high turnover of new titles that mm. um, I asked Team Ninja about this and they were just like uh, we have a lot of people like mm. we, we just kind of get it done Capcom's the same I don't, I, I don't know they also prioritize different things like the like a dragon games don't look like the last of us or anything like that but that doesn't matter because yeah the, their, the gameplay is so much fun so and also Japanese yeah, working practices are always you know 10 times worse than anywhere else in the world yeah, yeah. Works. <laughs> but you don't go home until just work goes home at 10pm go to the bar mm. get wrecked yeah. and then go back to work the Ugh, next day God, um, is it a is it a in Japan is there any services for like swapping your suit because you've been sick down it and you have to go back to your work oh do you not think like, like I mean last like, I mean um, 7-Eleven carries shirts I mean like you know that you can go nice. into any uh, on every corner there is a shirt for sale uh, I think it's fair to say but yeah but, I mean they do yeah. you know you do see them spread out outside the Love Hotel district of uh, Shibuya <laughs> absolutely <laughs> mangled get them on the pod get them on, on we should do a podcast from loud. the Love Hotel district <laughs> um, speaking of people going to the Love Hotel district uh, that's where Chris Scullion will be for the next two weeks oh he's, yes um, he's, 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 off, he's off, off he's off on, he's off on holiday f- with, his, with his family he's getting back and then he's immediately jetting off to, uh, mm. to I mean I've never experienced uh, Japan as a non-drinker but good god it must be so much more fulfilling <laughs> just in Japan there's so many options to just booze and uh, I just think that um, you know being a non-drinker is such, such, a, such a bad way of experiencing things <laughs> I, I don't know there is, a, there is a part of me that like when I eventually go like I want to do a, I feel there's a, a <laughs> I don't know if he want this to be part of his public persona, but uh, Dan from IG in Japan right. is apparently huge drinker. He knows where to take you. He can, he can get you. He can get you where you want to go. Um, I was I saw him at SGF and I was like, yeah. I think I met. I think I met. I think I met him during. I've, I've still. I've gone to Japan specifically. Go to TGS about three times. Never managed it because it's just that on the way out to um, sort of. Uh, it's not Kobe. What's the, what's the place um, off off? Um, head basically due east uh, towards um, uh, one of the airports and uh, that, that's where the actual convention centre is and I've never got off my fat bum and actually got <laughs> to TGS but um, a lot of like the devs who I'd sort of met over in uh, um, uh, Osaka and, um, and, and Kyoto um, were having beers in, in town um, and so I met with them and stuff and yeah the, the, Jap- like the, the western lads who work for big companies in Japan that like, they just you just have to be part of that culture. <laughs> it's a non-negotiable. Yeah. It's great. I also want to like. There was a time in my life where I knew quite a lot of wrestlers, like in the mm. Scottish scene, mm. and I always wanted to parlay that into like going out on the beers in Japan with them because obviously uh, the whole sponsor culture and stuff like that. Like, do you want to go out with Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows and just get <laughs> absolutely wrecked on what was the name of that? That fat lad that was like the big the big super fan um, that always paid for them that became like a character on TV. Oh, um, uh, right, okay. Oh, what was his name? But anyway, he was like independently wealthy, so any time any of those boys were in Japan, he just paid for absolutely everything, and that, yeah. just, that just sounds like the life to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, as Chris Scullion fans, he will return. Um, it's a summer of travel. Next week's podcast, I will record from uh, Toronto, Canada, so <laughs> it's how going that, to be... How is that, <laughs> that going to work? I am, I am leaving... Uh, 
I leave London on Monday. Right. I'm in I'm in Paisley on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday morning I fly to Toronto, Canada. Directly from um, Scotland, presumably. You're not from right. Glasgow, yeah. Okay. Oh, because fine. there's such a there's such a high uh, emigration population in Canada of Scottish people that they found yeah. it actually worth it to do direct flights. So huh. can't can't fly to anywhere in the United in the United States from Glasgow, pretty much. But you can't you, can't you can do go to Canada. Canada. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Okay, after the break, we're going to talk about this Xbox Game Pass debacle. We'll see you in a minute. And we are back. Microsoft has announced some price changes to Xbox Game Pass. From July 10th, the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate tier, which includes PC Game Pass, Day One Games, back catalogue titles, online play and cloud gaming, will go from $14.99 in the UK. Uh, will go to $14.99 in the UK. It's currently $12.99. PC Game Pass will increase to $9.99 in the UK, but most significantly, they've announced that the kind of standard, the bog standard Xbox Game Pass uh, for console members will no longer have day one games, which has been the thing that they've been uh, shouting about for all this time. Pete... <laughs> this i've been predicting this for a long time because you cannot just give away your games um but they have been so hot and heavy for so many years about everything's on game pass game pass is this netflix of games every tier you're going to get all our day one titles indiana jones all the rest of it is this a market necessity is this them needing to make money how do you read it um i I mean i just think it's um they love making their messaging even more complicated and convoluted (laughs) and this is just uh, you know the latest in a long line of delicious decisions from xbox it's not even about restricting the first day titles to to to, to people it just seems to be i don't want anyone to know about the product and if they do happen upon knowing about the product um i i will uh, make it more difficult and more expensive you to access the product in my opinion because I, I i think you i think it, it's kind of being battered back and forth different companies doing their messaging slightly differently but i do think i i, it, I am of the opinion that xbox do do make their messaging more d- difficult than it needs to be why are there so many price point, points why are there um why are they so difficult to grab hold of and, and why are they sort of moving the goalposts every every few few while I think it's difficult because like Netflix has multiple price tiers, but the more expensive ones are like if you want high bit rate 4K stuff, which ninety nine percent of people don't give a don't yeah. give a shit about, or yeah. if you want like more screens, whereas it, because it's games, there's more tangible differences and the the platform differences like PC Game Pass, people are still getting a great deal, but it's those kind of core Xbox people that are kind of getting the shaft here. It's a weird situation because. <sighs> It's still a really good deal. Like mm. any way you look at it, if they put out, if if there's three games every year that you want on Xbox Game Pass, that's worth it. Like if you if you stack up across the year, yeah. but it just it feels bad because it is a price increase and because everything is getting more expensive and because you go to the shops and like fifty quid's worth of shopping is now three hundred pounds. So it's it's a weird thing. I also think it's I don't know why they time these. Uh, announcements for like fallow periods where there are no games to justify it see if they did Mm. this just after say indiana jones is like a 9.5 out of 10 if they did that around then people would be like yeah but come come on think of the money that you used to be spending on these 70 quid games Um, and it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult thing to message um also chris dring who's uh darkened this podcast door many times has pointed out they're not getting the subscriber numbers they thought they would it's not become this ubiquitous Netflix of games for the wider audience because there just there isn't really an audience for those subscription services for games. So uh, the thing that they can't do is just go, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> we're going back to 70 quid. Every game is 70 quid. Don't worry about it. Xbox Game Pass. Mm. I don't even remember her name. Um, so yeah, it's a... Okay, but I mean, making their products <laughs> so, like slightly less... Um, spectacular and fun and useful. Um, is that really the, you know, you don't want to buy this car anymore because I've made shit on it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what? How do you make something? Is it is it in your best interest to make something um, not quite as attractive to people? Because at the end of the day, it's like, well, yeah, that damages your brand in, in the grand scheme of things. 
they are entirely responsible for devaluing like their 70 quid games because mm. who would why would you buy something for 70 quid when you can get it on game pass and yeah. now when they're in a situation where games are so expensive and they've <laughs> we want so the 70 studios, quid back yeah. but we want the money <laughs> give us the money they're looking at playstations uh, selling spider-man 2 for 70 quid and selling like f- whatever 50 million copies and going oh my god oh. that's so much money um <laughs> microsoft are in the weird situation where like it is a. It's not even a drop in the ocean. It's like one atom of one of one droplet of one mm. piece of water in the ocean for how much money that company has. Yeah. But there will come a time if they if they kept going in the way, in the direction they were kind of direction of travel they were going where the the line goes in the wrong direction and some someone at Microsoft, much like when WCW was finally killed, they'll just go. Sorry, why are we spending this much to get absolutely nothing back out of it? Yeah. It'll be someone that's that's this passionate about games. Like it'll be someone for a long time. Microsoft, uh, the Xbox like project was protect was protected because people like that lo- launched it, moved up in the company, they were attached to it, so it was okay. But mm. there will come a time where that's not the case. Um, why don't I they? Why don't they ins- instead of sort of because gamers obviously get upset. The tribalist uh, uh, of, of, of the um, you know collection of gamers uh, in out, out there in the big wide world, um, they get very upset when um, games um, that used to be single platform games get you know available on, on other platforms. Why don't they stress it up as an invasion angle? Why don't they? Exactly. And they might be for it then. You do it. You do an advert where like. Uh, Aloy, Spider-Man, and Joe from The Last of Us are sitting in the front row of an <laughs> Xbox press conference. Yeah. Like, come on now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's silly. It also corresponds with Microsoft putting out a new advert and um, saying you don't need an Xbox to play Xbox because they, they have um, they've put their cloud gaming onto Amazon Fire Sticks, which oh, is good. a very clear mess up their hardware as well. Clear, just, just, just forget yeah. what they are doing. Don't buy, don't buy our Game Pass. Don't buy our hardware. We have nothing to offer, even though we gave you about ten really good reasons to stick with us uh, about a month ago. I mean, it's wild, isn't it? We've we've just bought every studio in the world, but see this this hardware that the, the Xbox hardware is good, right? But the problem is they put they did this dual um, release system this uh, generation where they had the Series X and they had the S, mm. and most they thought most people would would if there were hardcore gamers in the last generation they would want the X and then mm. casual people would buy the S. Everyone bought the S. No one's buying the X. Yeah. Like as as the Xbox's hardware numbers are absolute dog dirt. So transition this now into well, you can get cloud gaming for Game Pass on the Fire Stick. Maybe they just want to sell Xbox controllers. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, okay, we'll sell you an Xbox controller with a Fire Stick for two hundred pound. Yeah. It comes with six months of cloud Game Pass or whatever. And, and also, I think I didn't even know you could do that. Like I again, messaging. I like to think that I, you know, I I, I read about more games than I actually play, uh, but. You being able to play um, Xbox um, remotely without having an Xbox, I had no idea that existed. Now, that's their, and their cloud good. stuff is quite good. Right, like it's, it's good tech. Um, mm. Although there is an issue where if too many people are using it, it literally puts you in the queue, and it's like, whoa! Yeah, uh, it's just Halo is too popular at the minute. Uh, why you can't don't we, afford. Why don't we try like, this in a you're little literally while? Microsoft. Like you are in bed with yeah. every Amazon server farm. Um, you know this side of Iceland. I mean, just 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 put some more money in the, you know, put some more tokens in, in, in the hole. I mean, like uh, the the thing that excites me though is I watch a lot of like tech YouTubers who find old like silicon graphic workstations from the nineties and stuff that you know have been taken out of um, video game houses and they're just they're just hosing nice. the hard drives for for any sort of unreleased stuff. I want uh, to see Linus Tech Tips below and anyone below him just taking apart a xbox server machine if you know what i mean there'll be a whole raft of you know um the old the the, the ill-fated google products and stuff there'll all be these these systems that have been pulled out of server racks that have the gpu that have the processor that went into the xbox and i want to see what they look like i want to see people pull them apart i want to <laughs> see how their uh, how, how their water cooled and stuff <laughs> have you ever seen a playstation 5 development kit uh oh have i now is it no, like a big I don't think. V-shaped thing. Oh yes, unnecessarily um, ostentatious uh, machine. It's in. It's yeah. not like I mean the net Eurose was like it was black, and that was it. And that's yeah. you know it was black, <laughs> good looking, sexy little thing. Uh, but yeah, this. Uh, I mean, why did they, why did they make it look so stupid? 
<laughs> I've no idea. Like I've seen I've seen them in person twice recently when we went to PlayStation to play Concord. It was on right. dev kits, and as they were like wrapping up for the day, they put the dev kit next to my bag. And my first thought was, I could just steal this. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. But then secondly, I was like, oh my god, like the size of this is ridiculous. Um, lift it. There was a funny story this week where someone sold one on eBay, and um, because they they listed it as a PlayStation pizza maker. <laughs> um, and it didn't get flagged by eBay because previously people have tried to sell those dev kits and yeah. Sony have said take that's, them that's down because right, they're, they're technically pro- the Sony's product aren't they you, they, you just rent yeah. them or something but uh, I love we went kits. on a studio tour a couple of years ago and the studio was absolutely freaking out because some people caught like a, a PS5 dev kit like and they were like vlogging or whatever and someone caught a PS5 dev kit in it but it had been released like yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. knew what it was and they were just like please we're not allowed to take uh, pictures of those. It's like good old. That mate, sounds can, like you've, that sounds like they're just mis- they, they've misread the takes and says or just they don't live in the real world. And there's been a bit jobs work. Yeah. Uh, do you remember like the DS um, dev kits where it was just like it was a computer <laughs> and then you'd have a big pipe coming out of it and it was a DS connected to the pipe. It was so confusing. Oh, <laughs> there was a good there was a good thing. It was either on Twitter or Reddit, but it was like a compilation of all the Nintendo dev kits oh. and they just. Uh, really beautiful the stuff that was like stained yellow from smoking so many fags <laughs> yes. like it's just exactly what you're Love it. I'm always um, I'm always dreaming that I'm going to go into a charity shop there, there is no value to go into a charity shop these days because charity shops yeah. know what things are worth and you may as well just go to eBay and buy it properly um, but if you go, go to a charity shop I'm like one day I'll find like I'm obsessed with like uh, being down I live on the coast I'm obsessed with poss- possibly potentially finding a big blob of ambergris, and I'm obsessed with um, possibly uh, running into like an old um, silicon graphics workstation down a charity shop, or um, like a you know a Net Eurosi or something like that, and, or one of those um, mad Nintendo kind of like kiosks that you used to get in hotels. Oh like, yeah, connected to the tellies and stuff. Whoa. Andy's probably got one. Uh, oh, almost certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, Apparently, down Brighton and Bathway, uh, the charity shops are filled with old review copies because that's where all the magazines used of to be. Course, and when people yeah. moved out, they all just like. Absolutely. Kevin McDonald's friend of the show. <laughs> um, she took like 10 years worth of that shit and took it to a children's hospital in Glasgow and was just like, here you go, here's hundreds of games. Do you want FIFA 09 on, like, on a console? Yeah. You don't have, like, I think I, I don't um, think I've ever. I don't think I've ever. I think I might have sold like a couple of things on the. Because back when I used to work on a radio station, um, uh, PR companies would send you stuff because they don't want video game press they, they don't want to spend the money on video game press they want to spend the money on people who aren't fucking interested in uh, in, in video games at all um, and they want the mass market they want the um, and I've spoken about this before on the podcast but uh, they'd send us um, loads of nonsense and I think I think I sold I think I sold like a really like like sea level kind of shooter on a like um, commemorative edition 10 years after mm. it came out on eBay and stuff and like it didn't make any money but I was just like I just need it out of my house but I did think in the back of my head I was going Am I going to be blacklisted? Am I going to be in big trouble? But they don't send me anything. Anyway, the last, I think the only thing I've been sent in the last like five years were um, uh, it was a PR company that was doing a fishing game um, and I'm friends with, nice. with the owner. Um, and they, it, it came with some like fish, fish flip-flops, like, like, it, like flip-flops that were shaped like a fish. And I was wearing them just around the house. They were, my, they were my DIY kind of flip-flops, but they, were, they, were this, they looked like you're standing in a pair of fish, um, a, pair, a pair of trout. And uh, I didn't realise at one time I was in the fish and chip shop wearing these shoes, like the <laughs> biggest fan of fish and chips ever that I had to put on my really special fish shoes. Fish. Yeah, full <laughs> kit for fish. I'm a full kit stan. Fish stan. Oh, uh, mate, see, my my mum and dad's house is filled with that crap. Like, my dad does uh, his gardening in a Dishonored 2 Worldwide Launch t-shirt. Yeah, um, yeah, nice. So it looks like he's a, he's a, a real hardcore. And my <laughs> mum walks the dog in a Tiny Tina's Wonderlands hoodie. Like, it's all... <laughs> my, my, my missus, every night when we're going to bed, like, she wears a random game top as pyjamas. And mm. I'm like, honestly, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, where did you get that? And then I remember that I brought it back from some random trip. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I left okay. it on the tray, yeah. That didn't even look at me. Like, I'll get back. <laughs> I'll fly home and I'll just hand her the bag of swag and she just picks what she wants and then the rest of it just goes in the office so. um, <laughs> lovely yeah it's a, I've got to love tat um, I've, I've never sold any tat because I mean I feel, I feel weird about selling stuff um, oh yeah I, I mean like that, that, that could get you in, is like, that could get you in, in, in oh yeah you'd, you'd never do it like the, there are people that do it with like current stuff which are yeah, clowns yeah, yeah. like I always think Ten years later, or when you're not working at that place anymore, uh, or like the studio has shut down, but there's people. 
there's people that have sold stuff that is that is like numbered, and if something's here's a, here's a tip. If something's numbered, the PR people know, know who it's going exactly to. Know exactly what so the number is. So they will just buy it and find out who it is. Like. And then you get on the shit list, and you never, you never get any more stuff. Because you used to see in like um, in London, you used to see like a lot of, um, uh, you know, the the, the red labelled PS3, PS4. Um, oh yeah, there are CDs. You used to see them in cash those. converters all the time, and you're like, what? Well, you're not allowed. Actually, you used to see them in games sometimes as well, which is a bit of a weird one. Yeah, you wouldn't think that they would take them because no. they don't look real for 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 one. Like, I don't think their comms um, are very good from head office, and that's probably why they just yeah. sold. Are they still with us? No, they're not. They died, didn't they? They, 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 they were they exclusively Funko Pops for a while. Were they? I, I forget because on this podcast G- we get still, still still kicking a ball. It's still as like a as part of Mike Ashley's machine. Like you can still right, find them. You, oh yes, of course. Connects, I remember now. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I was, I, it was it was a melodrama that was um, taking a, a, a long a long time to sort of die, wasn't it? They basically recently it was like, oh, they're going to stop doing trade ins, and then Game came out and said that's not true. But I get a feeling that that's that's not true yet. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. will okay. stop doing it, and well, still we'll just sell Pokemon cards and like occasional, um, or well. They stop. Okay, so th- did they stop taking trades, or maybe they they're they're, they're only going to do like a, a small number of new games, like a small number of stocks. That makes because sense. Because if you go into you go into a game now, it's someone who is just stacking football boots who has to run across the shop floor and serve you in game. There's no experts anymore. You can't go into a game <laughs> and ask them. I mean, there was never really experts in game, but you know what I mean. You can't go in and mm. a- expect a base knowledge of well, video uh, games. I mean, um, they just they just sold collectors editions, Funko Pops, and just kind of like you know. Uh, and and then you'd have like a little section. I think in the ones in London, you'd have the ones that were like downstairs, and it'd have like a little esports. They went big on yeah. esports for a bit. That, that nobody, you would nobody ever in there. <laughs> no. They had one of those on Union Street in Glasgow, and now it's one of those. It's one of those shops that we talked about that sold that sells those Poppy Playtime like plushes. Oh and, um, yeah, yeah. Bongs Harry, Harry Potter and ones. vapes like. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, American candy, uh, surplus Harry Potter stock that Warner Brothers seems to just have thousands of that they can send to <laughs> to every every small every like medium sized town in the country. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, I don't, I don't really long for these days because I don't need it anymore. But I do feel quite sad about the fact that there is no, there is very few independent places, and there is no mainstream gaming place that someone can just walk in and be like, I don't really know what I'm looking for here, can I ask you a question? It's all got to be, you've got to look on YouTube and you've got to look on on the internet. There's no one to really talk to about that. Um, yeah, and, and but those people are out that, there, I suppose. But, it, I mean, my kind of formative years, and I, I am an old, old duffer, but, like, my formative years were spent <laughs> just, just rolling around Electronics Boutique and Peak Computers in Hartlepool. And you used to get, like, um, they used to sell, like, public domain um, stuff, which you, you shouldn't really be selling anyway, but, like, stuff they download from, like, Usenets and, 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 yeah. and, 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 and message boards and stuff. Um, they would put on floppy disks and they would sell them for, like, a quid. Um, and that was where, like, you know, I, I experienced, you know, my first like bit of like computer animation and and stuff that you would get from like um, like an independent um, computer shop. Um, but it's only happening because like somebody in the area would sort of download these files, get them onto floppy disks, and sell them for like twenty on the dollar. Um, it was it was a really important time for me, I think, and like you know, talking to um, like-minded individuals. And of course, it was like connected next door to a, a role-playing shop and you know a miniatures painting outfit and stuff and it was just yeah it was it was I, th- I think those kind of spaces are you know where do the nerds go they go to right-wing forums is where they go and they become insects yeah. and they hate women they go to vgc they go to vgc <laughs> the video game podcast um, <laughs> yeah the inability to stand in a game shop for two hours and just look at all the games yeah. and be like oh, I've, never, I've never seen that what's that like, pressurize your mother it. into buying them you can't do that on a website can you um because yeah. you're there you just steal her credit card <laughs> you yeah. can <laughs> okay. Um, any more for any more? You played anything this week? Are you are you still Steam decking it? Or are you too busy a man these days? I've got one of those little uh, those little um, illegal um, little uh, little what are they called um, system on a chip. The little Game Boy, um, the, 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 the little Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy lads. That's the only sort of games I'm I'm, I'm getting to play because we're in the middle of the Euros basically, and if I'm not prepping for a show on the way out um, into London. Uh, on the way back, I'm sleeping because I'm tired. These t- <laughs> these 10 p.m. finishers and, and later are absolutely do do me in. Uh, but yeah, I have been bashing through. I did uh, download um, Alan Wake on Alan Wake 2 on my second 
system. Uh, I played about an hour on PS5, and I played another hour on uh, on PC. It's 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 an. I'm ripping off those um, the, the the style of the poof, um, Alan Wake Two. You know the the chapter yeah. um, titles. I'm stealing that for the Rambo uh, live show, and uh, I don't care who knows it. Quite frankly, because you know. Please do. <laughs> I'll be sitting there in the audience going, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still threatening to come to that, and if I do, I would like um, you to. You know how when they're prepping for the Oscars, they print out black and white pictures of the oh, like the, the red the carpet, stars yeah. on the chairs, um, to to see like, oh, this is where everyone's sitting. I would like one of those for me, please. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, <laughs> and whatever other like uh, C-list London celebs that you're you're dragging along. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of men, to be fair. There's a lot of men in in the football rumble f- um, fandom who um, have beards and um, short hair. And so I would say mm. it could be anyone. Uh, anyone's going to say that. Kind. I'll I'll take. A, you keep. I've seen like you in real life. And you short st- hair. You've got the, you've got the capacity to do it. You're just lazy. I know. <laughs> lazy. I know. Hair, <laughs> uh, I, I, honestly, if, if I could be bothered, I would shave this down to like a hitman every single day. But imagine if, imagine if you just stopped drinking caffeine what? for five minutes and it just starts <laughs> coming out. <laughs> Big afro. The problem is this bit and this bit is like completely gone so it would just be a big plume here and then like a ring around the side you like, could, you could I mean just put little horns in like Hellboy yeah <laughs> now we're talking yeah. I'll just get I'll just get really um, really discoloured plugs around the other bits and we'll be fine <laughs> yeah, colour it in. Uh, what what <laughs> what a, a heel turn that would be one week just turn up with full head of hair and don't acknowledge it well, that's, well, I, that's the only reason why I grew mine out because in my 20s uh, Richard Bacon's wife said uh, you Pete you uh you uh, only shaved your head because you went bald. I was like, well, no, I, I can do and that. I was like, does everyone think that? <laughs> I'm going to grow my hair out. <laughs> not okay. That. Well, catch us next week uh, live from Toronto, Canada, and whatever other four corners of the world we're going to yeah. be. Chris is Chris threatened to take a mic to Japan, so maybe we're in, we're in Toronto, we're in Japan, we're, yeah. a, we're an international podcast. Hands across the world. Um, but we shall see. Send any questions, comments, and concerns to podcast at videogameschronicle.com. Check out the website for our PS5 giveaway. Uh, thanks to Grant Kirkhope for the VGC podcast theme. I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to go and explore the streets of California. It's like 35 degrees here, so I might die of heat stroke. But um, if I do, you can have all my game shit if you want it. Thanks, mate. All your special editions straight down cash yeah. converters. Lovely. <laughs> Uh, Until next time, say goodbye, Pete. Goodbye. We'll see you next week.